Hello everyone, it's kind of awkward making this video since my birthday was nearly two months ago, but I decided to make a what I got for my birthday video very late anyway because I can at least tell the story why I was late, plus I can show you what might be coming for this channel, so without further ado, Let's get to it. Starting with the PlayStation 2. Yeah, PlayStation 2 PK Cam with a non Nintendo system. What is this madness? Well, there's a method to my madness. And my method is Dance Dance Revolution <laughs> DDR Max, DDR Max 2, DDR Extreme, DDR Extreme 2, which is the one that stalled me from making this video for a while because it didn't come in the mail and I wanted everything to be in the mail before I made the video. I mean, you know, everything to be here from the mail for my birthday so I could show it, you know, rather than having like some like some sort of placeholder. And yeah, I was actually gonna print out a picture of DDR Extreme 2 to say I'll be getting it later so I can make this video earlier, but I thought, nah, I'll wait. And the time just kept passing and passing and passing. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so yeah, that was a mix up. I actually ended up getting two DDR Extremes instead of an Extreme and an Extreme 2 because of the mix up. And that's, yeah, that's kind of the issue that I had with that, <laughs> but it's okay. Everything worked out. And I got them. Anyway, Supernova, Supernova 2, and DDRX. But anyway, as you can tell, yeah, I've been craving some more DDR lately, which is mainly why I got the PlayStation 2, because the PlayStation 2 is like the home of console DDR games. And Konami hasn't made a console DDR game in like three, four years. <laughs> They've been updating their um, arcade game, but they haven't made any console releases and it makes me sad oh so sad so I got these <laughs> all the games are pretty good overall and I'm sure you know how to play them by now if you've seen my um, DDR videos on these games so I don't really have to explain them at all I hope <laughs> but uh, yeah rhythm games t uh, hit arrows with your feet time to the music Pretty simple concept, yeah. Um, my favorite of them, though, happens to be DDR Max and DDR Max 2 of these DDR games that I've got here. I don't really know how to explain it. I don't know, I just like the, the music, you know, the soundtracks in these two games, as well as the step charts in them. So, yeah, I've been playing those the most out of the DDR games just because I've been having uh, the most fun with them. But they are all fun overall, so... I gotta finish them all off eventually, so I gotta get back to those five anyway. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I've got some more games over here. Shadow of the Colossus and Xenoblade Chronicles. That's the only Wii game that I got for my birthday as I was, as I was focused on uh, PS2 games. So uh, I'm gonna focus on this one here to start with, Shadow of the Colossus. Um, some people describe this as an adventure game similar to The Legend of Zelda, but eh, I don't know. I wouldn't quite say that because Zelda is like go from one place to the other and solve puzzles, go through dungeons, defeat enemies, you know, that, that sort of stuff. But in this game, um, you all, once you, like when, when you start out the adventure, you start out at the central hub and you got to track down one of the Colossus. Well, there's no enemies along the way there. And it just gives you like a tutorial, the controls and stuff like that. And then you reach the Colossus, you got to figure out how to defeat the Colossus. Um, and then you get sent back to the central hub that you started out with and the story of the game continues. Um, but as far as I know, uh, this the game continues in that fashion. There's no dungeons, no enemies along the way. Just you, the only thing that you fight are the Colossus as far as I know. So it's more like an, an adventure and exploration game. And then you have bosses wherever you're supposed to go next. It's a pretty interesting game and artistic overall. So I recommend you try this if you uh, have a PS2. But uh, yeah, I would say it's definitely not uh, Zelda-ish since you don't have um, stuff to like defeat or heck you don't even have stuff like heart containers or something like that to collect it's just going from one Colossus to the next you'd think that wouldn't be all that interesting but it actually is the way that the game uh, presents it I guess you could say I don't want to really spoil it but uh, 
uh, you're gonna you'd have to play it for yourself to really get a understanding for the game. I I admit I haven't played it very much. The same with uh, uh, Xenoblade here, but that's because I've been kind of playing lots and lots of DDR. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm a terrible, terrible gamer. Well, okay, maybe not because I'm playing you know games like that good for exercise and stuff like that. What I mean is that I'm I'm ignoring you know artistic games for. I mean, these. I guess you could say these are sort of artistic, but not as artistic as these two over here. But, I don't know, I just, uh, like, when I want to play a new game, and I haven't 100%ed it, for some reason I just kind of gravitate towards DDR lately. I, <laughs> I can't help it, I love DDR! But anyway, um, I'm gonna continue with my <laughs> descriptions of these games here. I'm gonna go over to Xenoblade Chronicles here. You probably can't tell it's Xenoblade Chronicles unless you know that this is a reversed cover. Yeah, that Xenoblade Chronicles has a reversible cover here, which I did because it looks pretty sharp overall um, on the inside. Yeah, you got the typical stuff. Let's see if I can get this one-handed. Okay. <laughs> and there's the cover that you are probably used to seeing of this game. But anyway, enough of the cover here. About the game itself, um, it's sort of kind of like a turn-based RPG, but yet it's not. It's kind of hard to describe the gameplay of it, but it's pretty interesting. Um, it's like your character attacks automatically based off of what you tell it to do, but it attacks at the same pacing on its own, if that makes sense. Like, you give it a command, then it does that attack the next time it has the opportunity to be able to attack in the game's timing. So it's like, it is turn-based, yet it's not turn-based because you're constantly giving commands in real time. So it's almost kind of, you could say, like a part real-time strategy even, but at the same time it's not because you're not directing troops across a battlefield or something like that as battles are always focused on, uh, on a small area as far as I know. So it's it's a pretty interesting combat system, and it. But uh, as I said, I haven't been playing it all that much in favor of DDR. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so um, the uh, character equipment is a pretty big factor of this game. Like, there's a lot of equipment that you can give characters to boost, lower stats, modify stats, and whatnot, and that's pretty important, actually. Like. Um, in other RPGs, you can usually just, like, get by just by leveling up. No, not quite in this game, because the the leveling ups only seem to get you so far before you need to uh, switch equipment as well. But at the same time, the level ups are also important, because it seems like if you are below the level of an enemy, your attacks are far, far less effective than if you were equal to the enemy. Uh, but if you're above the enemy's level, it's your attacks are way, way more effective, and you're really overpowered compared to the enemy. And it's it's really hard to describe the combat of this game. I know I'm going all over the place with it, but that's just because it really is hard to describe the combat of it. You'd have to, another another thing that you have to try for yourself, just like Shadow of the Colossus, to see um, just what it's like. Um, uh, exploring in this game is incredible. Like. Pretty much anything that you see, you can uh, seemingly go to. Like, you know how you'd normally be able to see the mountains? Um, and they would be like the border of the area? Not in this game! You can actually go up the mountains some other way, and you can actually explore on top of the mountains and stuff like that. It's rather neat how much you, ha you have to explore in this game. I, I heard it's pretty dang huge, like a hundred hours worth huge, so uh, that, that that definitely would explain it, is the huge amount of exploration. Um, but as I said, still haven't played all that much of these two, so I can't really give my full opinion on them, I can just tell you how they, them, how they have played out so far for me. Um, I have been having fun with these, it's just that when I'm, as I said, I'm playing mostly DDR. <laughs> So I'll get back to these two eventually. I kind of feel bad for neglecting them for DDR, but I'll get back to them. Oh, and by the way, if you decide to pick up Xenoblade Chronicles, be wary that it is a GameStop exclusive, and it's also pretty rare, so you might be paying quite a bit to get it, 
Yeah, um, this was apparently $50 used. So, yeah, it's because of its rarity. That's apparently a pretty good price for a uh, uh, used game. I mean, a, a used Xenoblade Chronicles. So, yeah. Um, make of that as you will. I don't know how good these games are, like, um, as a whole. But from what I played them, they are pretty good so far. So, uh, don't think that, you know, just because their first impressions... I mean, my first impressions, excuse me, um, of them are good... Um, I mean, they could both go south as I keep playing, so <laughs> I don't know if they they are um, that good, you know, because I haven't played enough of them is what I'm saying, but I'll see as it pans out. I heard that they're both very good, which is why I got them, but uh, we'll see what I think of them later on, I suppose. Uh, now for the clothes that I got, I got some jean shorts and cargo short that, shorts that aren't really jeans or cargo this is cotton yeah this is printed on <laughs> um i got these because i told my family that I, I do like the looks of like jean shorts but i don't like how stiff denim is it's very uncomfortable so they got me these <laughs> it's a pretty nice compromise i have to say and they are very very comfortable overall and the shirt! Yes, a shirt! A single shirt that has stripes. Well, kind of stripes, more like uh, divided, because as you see, the pockets got the division from the uh, the top there, and the sleeves are... Um, uh, it's got the color from the middle, and yeah, you get what I'm saying here. It's a striped shirt, I guess you could say, just to speed things along. <laughs> and over here, this is a pretty handy-dandy tool. I already unscrewed the cap here, because it would be difficult to do one-handed, and I have to hold the camera with the other hand. This is the end dust. This is to clean cameras. You use this little tip to clean the camera lens. And uh, for like dusts and stuff like that, you got this brush that slides out of here to brush away your problems. Yeah, <laughs> you know, such as dust on the stuff and yeah. You basically dust off the camera um, and then go flip over to this side and use this end for the lenses. And it works really, really well, like a lot better than you would think it would. Uh, yeah. I rather like this. <laughs> but anyway, that's about it for my birthday stuff. So you could probably expect more DDR goodness in the future and maybe uh, those two games. Because as I said, I'm not sure how much I like them as I keep playing them, but that's why I got them to give them a shot. But anyway, I'm going to end off this video here because it's gone on for quite a while. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you later.